All right, all right, guys. So I'm doing some observing with the batter zoom versus the sidebound zoom. And, um, you know, from what I could initially say, I mean, there's really more similarities to differences. And I mean, considering the price difference of these two guys, um, yeah, I mean, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd say that this is actually a pretty good value for being a zoom lens that's under a hundred bucks. Now, is it totally equivalent to the batter? Um, I wouldn't say so exactly. Uh, so, uh, why don't we go inside and we'll kind of talk more about the details. Hey guys, welcome inside. If you're not familiar, I run a little astro blog called avtastro.com and my name is Vlad. Um, about a year ago, actually one of the first videos that I posted on YouTube was a video about uh, what I consider to be a really good choice for your first serious uh, telescope eyepiece. And, uh, you know, a year on from now, um, I've had a, you know, a number of questions about it, so I kind of wanted to make a follow-up video about it uh, and talk about another eyepiece that you should really consider if you're kind of more of on a budget. So let's get to it. All right, all right. So if you guys haven't watched that first video that I made on the batter zoom, uh, um, I would really watch that video. It kind of goes through not just you know me recommending that eyepiece, but why I recommend it. Uh, so. I, you know, I'll touch on some of the key points of why I think, you know, this is a good eyepiece and uh, the newcomer, which is the um, Cybon, I think is how you pronounce it, uh, Zoom. Um, you know, why in general they're like a really good eyepiece to kind of start your collection out with. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to go through like all the details. Uh, and in that video, I just kind of cover a lot of general, uh, you know, eyepiece terminology, just stuff, you know, to think about when you're selecting eyepieces. Um, and I also have another video on um, building an eyepiece collection, essentially. Uh, so that's a, that'd be another good watch. Anyhow, so yeah, let's get to the differences between you know what's going on with these two guys. So I'll start out with a little recap of why you know I kind of recommended the batter zoom just in general. Um, this eyepiece, you know, um, sharpness-wise, contrast-wise, is an excellent, excellent eyepiece. Uh, field of view-wise, at the 24 millimeter setting, you get about a 50 degree field of view. Uh, the closer you get to the 8 millimeter setting, you actually get out to 68 degrees of field of view. So it's fairly wide. I mean, it's not like a you know like a hyper wide you know field of view eyepiece. Uh, but I consider this to be wide enough for general use, especially in like let's say between you know, probably around 14 millimeters down to 8 millimeters, you know, it gets pretty wide. Um, I use this, even though I've got like literally over three grand worth of eyepieces, I use this eyepiece by far the most just because of that convenience factor. Um, you know, I've compared this to my ortho eyepieces on the planets. I've, you know, I've compared it to my white fields as well. Um, it's, you know, I'd say like at least 95% is sharp, 95% is contrasty. So just awesome eyepiece. Um, you know, just in general. So the newcomer, the sideband zoom. Um, you know, I actually got this. Uh, you know, like somebody replied to the video that I made about this eyepiece, and they're like, "Well, this thing is the same thing for like, you know, um, like a, I don't know, like a third of the money or whatever. It's quite a bit less. It's under a hundred bucks what these sell for." Uh, so I just got really curious. You know, I have also you know heard about this thing on the forums, like on cloudy nights and stuff. So I just wanted to you know kind of check it out and see what it was. So I ordered one. Um, it's also 24 millimeter uh, to uh, 8 millimeter. Uh, the thing that you're kind of giving up with this guy primarily is the field of view. So at the 24 millimeter setting with this guy, you start out with the 38 degree field of view, which is very narrow. I mean, that's narrower than uh, probably the eyepieces that came with your telescope, which probably be like plus a light piece. Those are around a 50 degree field of view. Um, and it goes up to 56 degrees when you get to the 8 millimeter setting. So that's the main difference. Now, comparing these physically, as you can see, they do look, you know, pretty, pretty similar. Both of these, uh, if you have the uh, the fourth generation of the batter zoom anyway, they have an eye cup guard that kind of rolls up, so you can kind of adjust the height of that. Um, you know, I always use these with the eye cup fully down. That's just kind of how I prefer to use eye pieces, unless they have a really long eye relief, which these don't. These have an eye relief that's, I think, like around 18 millimeters or so. Um, so anyhow, yeah, that uh, the zoom mechanism is pretty smooth on both of these. Uh, there is one difference with the zoom mechanism on these, just kind of physically. This is just, you know, on the sideband zoom, it's just a smooth uh, turn. You know, there's no clicks. Um, with the batter zoom, there are clicks that are 
not super distinct but you know distinct enough to where you kind of know that you're at a certain like you know like at the marked settings you know whether it's 8 uh, 12 16 and so on uh, so that you know you can't tell not super important to have that honestly unless you're going to be using these in the bino viewer uh, then you know it's kind of nice to have them set exactly at the you know same um, vocal end settings Although really honestly, even with the binary viewer, if you're a little off, you know, chance are well aren't going to matter, so it'll work just fine um, if you have a couple of these things. Uh, so physically, you know, construction-wise, I really want to say that the batter zoom, you know, physically feels like too much different, really. Um, I have uh, had the previous version of the batter zoom, the uh, the third, ver you know, the um, Mark III. Um, and the zoom mechanism does get really stiff uh, on that one in the cold, you know, like if it's like below, let's say like 40 Fahrenheit or something, you know, it'll get pretty, pretty sticky. Um, I, you know, the, the fourth generation does not suffer from that. This one, I used that in the cold, you know, it's still uh, winter outside. And yeah, I mean, it doesn't get sticky or anything at all. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that. So yeah, I mean, physically, you know, construction wise, there's really not too much difference. All right, so let's get to the meat of the review. How does this thing actually perform out, you know, under the night sky? Like I said before, that thing is awesome. The battery zoom, I mean, optically is great. Um, this thing, you know, at first blush, when I first looked through this, like at the moon, a couple of double stars, at some deep sky objects, you know, quite frankly, I couldn't tell much of a difference optically between these as far as sharpness goes, contrast goes, um, just the overall feel of it goes. Um, I really feel really comfortable on it, just like this thing. Um, after I spent a few nights of observing, and this is really kind of getting to nitpicking, um, I could tell, like for instance, I was actually looking at M42, the Orion Nebula, um, last night actually, with both these guys, pretty extensively. I probably spent like a good hour, you know, just kind of comparing these two. Um, and at first, you know, quite frankly, it almost looked to me like the contrast was better on the sideband zoom um, because the, the sky around, the, the black sky around the nebula looked darker in this compared to this side piece, to the better zoom. But then actually, you know, after comparing it for a while, I realized that this thing was actually just showing more nebulosity. And after comparing, you know, I looked at like M81 and 82, which are galaxies. I looked at the Eskimo Nebula, which is a small planetary nebula with both these, comparing them pretty... Um, pretty extensively. Um, I could conclude that the contrast and just the overall light thermal put, so you know the, the brightness of the image is a little bit better with the batter zoom. Uh, so I don't know if that's you know, on the type of glass that they use, the coatings or whatever, uh, but this is a better deep sky eyepiece in general. Um, although it's not a huge margin, again, I mean, I had to like really sit there and compare the views. So, like, if you're newer to astronomy and you took a look through both of these, chances are you probably wouldn't like really notice that, but there is a difference there. So, I kind of talked about deep sky. So, how do these things compare to on the moon? Um, I compare them on the moon pretty extensively. You know, honestly, on the moon, I couldn't tell too much of a difference, which is a good thing. Uh, that means that the sharpness of this thing uh, is pretty darn good. I mean, um, unfortunately, right now, the planets are not out. So, like, Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn are not, you know, like, really out right now. So, I couldn't really compare them on the planets. Uh, but I could tell you that, you know, from looking at the moon, looking at double stars, this is a pretty darn good you know eyepiece for those i mean is it going to be as sharp as an ortho probably not i mean it's going to be a little bit behind that and this is uh, to a certain extent too i'd say let's say if you you know if, if we're dealing with the perfect planetary eyepiece this would probably give you 95 percent of the performance of that this might give you like 90 or maybe like 85 percent so i mean Considering that this thing is a Zoom IP's excellent build quality and under a hundred bucks, that's actually pretty high praise. All right, so I kind of covered, you know, both like planetary slash moon, double star, and deep sky with these. You know, um, you know, there is a difference, not a huge difference in performance with these. So how's the overall feel, you know, with observing through these two guys? Um, you know, as far as the field of view goes, um, that's where the huge, like, staggering <laughs> difference really is between these two guys. Um, that you will certainly, it's, I mean, you won't mistake in this side piece for this side piece when you're kind of comparing the field of view. Um, honestly, this, you know, with, especially starting with that 38 degree field of view, I mean, that's substandard. There's really no eyepieces that are made 
uh, that are that narrow and you know by the time you get to the eight millimeter setting it gets you know like decently wide but still pretty darn narrow uh, so that's the huge kind of downside with this eyepiece. I mean, if you're using it for the planets, let's say, you know, that's totally fine. Uh, for deep sky objects, you know, like like I said, I was looking at M42 the other night, or uh, last night actually. And, uh, I mean, the difference is huge. I mean, honestly, like this, uh, with the, I, was, I actually had my 8-inch uh, um, uh, LX200 out last night. This thing at the 24 millimeter setting, you know, it frames the nebula pretty well, fits almost the whole thing in there. With this, I mean, you're only kind of like looking at almost like the essential portion of it. Um, so yeah, so field of view wise, I mean, this is, you know, far superior. Like I feel like this eyepiece I could have as my only eyepiece, right? And I'd be pretty happy. Although a lot of times I'll have this eyepiece and like a, um, a two inch wide field eyepiece to kind of cover in like the whole range. With this eyepiece, uh, yeah, I don't feel like, uh, you know, this kind of does me. Like, it just feels too narrow for me. So that that is, like, the huge difference. So that's kind of, like, what you're, I guess, paying to give for with this guy. All right, so to sum it up and bring the ship home, um, is this eyepiece worth the extra money compared to the sideline zoom? You know, it kind of depends. If you're using the primary for the planets and you're on a budget or like a moon um, eyepiece, I would say, you know, maybe not. Um, just an, like just an overall eyepiece that you're going to keep for a lifetime, this is easily, easily worth it. I mean, just that extra, you know, field of view, just a little bit of extra performance, you know, optically wise. Um, I would say it's easily worth it. This, again, is an eyepiece that I feel you could buy. Um, you know, like when you're new to the hobby, you'll use it a lot. Um, actually, you know, when you progress in the hobby, you'll still use it a lot just because it's such a convenient eyepiece. It's really sharp contrasting that type of deal. Uh, this guy, you know, if you, like, if it's just not in your, like, you know, like books to, like, spend 300 bucks on the batter zoom, which, you know, it's a little bit under that, but it's around that price range. Um, if you're just like in that price range of under a hundred bucks, you know, don't don't get me wrong. This is an odd. I mean, for less than a hundred bucks, I mean, you get a lot here. You know, I mean, it's kind of a little bit like comparing a Honda Civic to uh, to like you know like a C class Mercedes. I mean, you know, like naturally a twenty thousand dollar Honda Civic, which is you know kind of what this is, is not going to be as good as like a sixty or seventy thousand dollar Mercedes, right? I mean, if you, you know, drive them side by, or, you know, back to back, I mean, chances are, hopefully, anyway, right, uh, the Mercedes is going to be a little bit smoother, the interior is going to feel a little nicer, which is what you get with that. But, you know, for a general commuter, you know, like, if, yeah, I mean, this is an awesome, awesome eyepiece. Uh, so, um, anyhow, yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, if you have questions, you know, like, specific questions about these, you know, what I, you know, what I think about that, or anything, or just eyepieces in general, Feel free to leave me a comment on the thing below. Um, if you like the video, hit that like button. And uh, if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.